Yeah, there we go, we'll all get filled up here. Mm. Yeah, that's looking good. That's gonna kick my ass. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, well, like that, Justin, this, this move with the mace bell. Here. The mace bell, where you transition from side to side, is great, too. It was just getting anti-rotation in the hips. Yeah. That way I get my upper thoracic to kind of press into it and get okay. some tension in there. I got one of those at my house. Okay, cool. Yeah, two of them, actually. Excellent. <laughs> they're cool. They're yeah. a cool group of guys. And oh, they're sick mobility guys. That? Yeah, they're great. Anything weighted for... Weighted for, for rotation with the yeah. clubs? Uh, what about mace clubs? Not mace typically. Um, what about water scooper or whatever it's called? Yeah, see, I mean, there's not a whole lot of uh, moves that I could think off the top of my head for that other than um, what I tend to do is I'll go across and do like a lateral lunge or a Cossack squat. Okay. And I'll kind of do a chopping move with that. So I'll come across here oh, okay. and then pull back. Or, uh, but any, any, you can actually, some of my friends are really good at this, but uh, you can go into a swing and then you can kind of drop into a squat that way or uh -huh. lunge. So there's a, I mean, there's plenty of fancy moves you can do, but. So for these, I see people do these a lot. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you can do that with a plate too, right? You can do it with a plate, you can do it with a kettlebell where we do like halos and rotation. But All see, these you're are emulating these levers here, so it's so mm -hmm. the weight's so far down there, it changes the way it feels. Yeah, you want the momentum to take it across yeah. more than anything. And it comes up. Am I right. doing anything there? I mean, I feel like I'm <laughs> stretching my shoulders. Show how you do it, okay. I feel like I'm, I'm stretching my shoulders. Right. We're yeah. just all over the place. So here. watch yeah. how he positions. Yeah. The hard okay. part is this. Is the so it's the control factor, okay? So it's the same exact. Uh, positioning I was doing with the Indian clubs, except now I'm, I'm sort of uh, prompting it up here by lifting and raising my elbow, and then I'm bringing it up to the side, and I give it a little bit of emphasis there to push it across. Okay, so as I'm kind of coming up, okay, my torso is moving just a bit to kind of keep that slow. pendulum going. <laughs> it's, hard go slow. Slow. Okay. Slow. it's hard to go slow. Okay. It's hard to go slow because you need the momentum. You need the momentum to swing it so back. I'm yeah. pulling it down here. So the this momentum. part, this part is just kind of kicking across. Are you using I'm your shoulder to kick it Pulling it in. So I, I kind of kip it up, <sighs> then I pull it into my body. You and don't have to use your shoulder, but stabilize. that's the direction. Yeah. So really all the emphasis is on yeah, that right. initial start. To, yeah, you're starting to get it. Yeah, that initial start, and then I'm going to drive my elbows down. So now you see how you're extending back and uh, try to stay upright with this. So okay. You're just allowing the, the shoulders to rotate and do the work. Oh. There you oh. go. Yeah. You're trying to use your there, body too there much. There you're getting it better right there. Now okay. you're starting to get Squeeze it. Squeeze your glutes, tighten the core. This should be a nice tight circle. I feel a lot in my wrist. So. Excellent. So there it is, mace bell swinging. Indian club swing, that's why I use these tools because there's not a whole lot to, you can do with the uh, dumbbells. It just, it just provides a nice, more of a fluid type of a movement, so. Yep, that's why I like those. You think it's mostly the value is in uh, warm up maybe and just general mobility or do you think you can actually do an entire workout routine around these? You could oh do an entire God. workout, yeah, yeah. it's. There's guys that specialize in just. Yeah. Working out with these types. Don't of... Don't kid yourself. You could load quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, oh, I've seen people. Base bells and <laughs> <laughs> like a big a ball huge, at the end of it. Huge. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you can definitely focus like specifically on that as a workout. Um, however, the way I use it the most is probably to prime my body before a workout, um, and that that tends to be a good way to kind of wake the central nervous system up, get everything to respond the way I want it to. Yeah. Um, so that's probably the most ideal way to use it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. You definitely can use this workout. I mean, it'll it'll fry you. So, okay. Yeah. I think it's cool. I mean, I just they look fun, and it's just anything you can add that's interesting that keeps you. You feel like a warrior. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. That's that's the best part of it. <laughs> well, there, I think. There's definitely a skill to it too. You know, it's not like one of those things yeah. where just anybody's going to pick it up and be able to do it. There's. It's why so we just we just buzzsawed through all that stuff. No, that's yeah. that's just fine. I didn't expect an Indian club or mace training course. I just wanted you to okay. see what, what value it could add into what okay. I. Okay. Sure. Do. Sure. So thank you, Justin. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime, brother. <laughs> all right. So I had a question for you. Yes. I think it's. Uh, uh, more of in line with your specialty is I got this tool mm -hmm. here. Um, this thing's called a roll flex or whatever. And I think it's pretty cool, but it's just basically a mobility tool, right? So let's break this bad boy open. And uh, they're a great group of guys, but you know, 
when I, when I see tools like these, and it's not just this one in particular, but any of them like a ball or a stick or any of that stuff, mm -hmm. I, I, I tend to stray away from it because one, I'm pretty healthy as it is mm -hmm. without having doing any of it. I think just based on the mobility practice I already do, yep. it's just Very uh, good full point. range of motion movements are the most therapeutic thing you can do. But I mean, every time I get massage work, they're always like, you're super fucking tight on my, like my calves and my wrists. They're like, you need to do something about this. This isn't good. And I do have ankle problems when mm. I do my moves. My ankles are my weakest link. So like with something like this or any sort of tool, I, I never know how to um, like program it. program it, measure it, gauge it. Uh, just, I mean, I'm pretty sure if I did this right before a workout real hard or the day before a really hard workout, it would probably set me up for injury. Is that right? So, so this, this works on pliability. So yeah. the way something like this works is you place it around the area you're trying to work, you use pressure yeah. from your hand, and you roll back and forth to, uh, it's almost like deep tissue work on the target area. Okay. It feels really good, it can alleviate, you know, and you know, you can do it with a tool, you can do it without a tool. I think everybody who's ever had a massage knows just how um, relieving uh, a massage can be on areas that are tight. What you're working on, or what you're, what you're working with, is something called pliability. So, muscles have extensibility, the ability to stretch. Mm -hmm. Muscles also have pliability. So, you can be very flexible, but then I can push on it and say, ooh, the, your pliability might not be very good. They're both related. The relationship between the two isn't quite fully understood, but we do know that when you have poor pliability, it can cause uh, issues with uh, mobility, function, and many times inflammation. There's several theories as to why that happens. One of the prevalent ones, or one of the ones I, at least I agree with, is that a muscle can be slightly turned on by the CNS, by your central nervous system, um, all the time. So if you, like if someone's walking around, they're like, oh man, I'm always so tight up in my traps. Um, that means that their traps may be kind of slightly in the small state of flexing all the time. Huh. Now you take any muscle, you can take your bicep or your quad or whatever and just keep it slightly tensed, small enough to where you might not even notice, but do it all day long, day in and day out, and you'll start to get inflammation, in particular at the insertion points. So you'll see people with, for example, talked about tight wrists, people with poor pliability in the wrists will tend to have pain up in the insertion points up by the elbow. Mm -hmm. um, they'll start to feel that, you know, uh, tennis elbow, they'll call, you know. Golfer's elbow. Golfer's elbow. And they'll notice it right up here. And so what deep tissue work does is when they go in and they, you know, they'll use terms like I'm breaking up, you know, tissue adhesions. or adhesions. That's what we used to say. We used to tell people that you're breaking up knots and adhesions and the science has evolved on what it is. We it's don't, more related to the central nervous system. For, than yeah, for the most Oh, see, I always thought it was like restoring gliding surfaces within the muscle mm -hmm. tissue, soft tissue. You know see, what, and, those, and, those are all theories. Those are all theories, unfortunately. Um, we don't know because it's it's hard. You can't walk, look at a muscle uh, under you know uh, scrutiny while it's being worked on. You'd have to like take it out of the you know take it out of the body, and by that point it's dead, right? So those are all theories. But what but the more prevailing theory is is that uh, you know when you're when you're working on uh, those types of muscles, you are reducing the CNS signal to that uh, that effect. Causing it to relax muscle. and actually have a chance to recover. That's it. There you go. You're causing it to relax a little bit. So you're right in the sense that if you did super, super deep tissue work on a muscle right before you did some kind of physical exertion, you may notice that uh, your chance of injury may go up because you may not you may not necessarily want to weaken that muscle. Okay. Sometimes you might want to. If I'm doing a squat and I've got an area that just is taking over, Sometimes I want it to chill out a little bit so I can do a better squat. Yeah. So, um, you know, tools like this, how do you program them in? Yeah, how do I know how much is enough? How do I know how far to take it? If you're going to do this, first of all, you got to go by feel. Um, it's going to be painful when you do it. Is it improving range of motion? Am I feeling better afterwards? Those are the, the, the measurements you want to use. Best time to do this, after you work out. Okay. So at the end of my heavy workout, now I'm going to go in and do some deep tissue work on some of the muscles that I noticed are just really, really tight. Um, that way I have time before the next workout. It's also the muscles got blood in it, it just worked out, um, and it helps. You know, we, we have a program that we call Prime, and we use static stretches and foam rolling at the end of the workout because what it does is it helps direct the signal that you sent with your workout. So in other words, let's say you're overactive um, in your quads and your hips aren't firing uh, uh, like they should, and you're doing heavy squats. Well, at the end of your squat session, 
you want to reduce some of that overactivity in the quads, and I hate to use that term because that's not really accurate, but I think people know what I'm talking about. I'll do static stretches on my quads afterwards. And you what want that to does, shut them down. You want it a little bit, right? Just to give me the right, kind of direct that signal, you know, squ square at my target, which may be, at that particular moment, more hips and less quads. You okay. see what I'm saying? So something like this, at the end of your workout, probably the best time to As use far it. as prescribing uh, intensity too, uh, anything that I've ever, as far as my certifications and corrective exercise and stuff, everything I've ever read is they, they prescribe like 20 to 40% intensity. And I think that's where a lot of people go wrong with like foam rolling or tools like this is because it's so painful, painful, they treat it like a workout and they try and push through yeah. that. When it actually should be, it should be closer to a relaxing feeling really? than it should be a painful feeling. Well, then feeling. you progress it though. Exactly, and, yeah. and then that's Just like a you, workout, like you're gonna take a beginner and beat the crap out of them in the, in the squats. Right. You're gonna slowly progress them. That's how you should treat right. this kind of work as so well. So you're searching for, at most, 40% intensity on it. So if it's really intense, let off on the tension, the pressure. If you do that, it won't start, it won't hinder your workouts. If you were to foam roll and it fucking hurts while you're you're doing it yeah. that and then you and you try and push through it that could definitely make you sore and then hinder your workouts you want to if it's really tough I want to back off the intensity I want to definitely roll it work it but just enough to where I get a little bit of relief from it and then each time after thereafter I'll try and progress the intensity of it okay so ease into it yes it's mm -hmm. just do the right amount so that it has your attention but not so much yeah. that you're just sitting there in pain cave uh, counting down the minutes exactly. exactly treat it like a workout like you would with working out okay so now progressive then one more question about it I mean, yeah. Yes. Um, let's say, is this something that you would just do even if you didn't feel like you needed it for a certain muscle group, or is it sort of like as needed basis? Um, so that's a great question. The more you work out, the more uh, you, you'll probably benefit from using tools like this. I don't like to say um, always with yeah. most things, um, except for the staples, right? Um, because I think people can get carried away. Um, and it can get daunting. Like all of a sudden you've got this ridiculous routine where you're spending, you know, three hours a day doing all kinds of different, you know, modalities on your body. Yeah. I would say... As needed. Uh, as needed. And if you have a tendency to continue to get tight in certain areas, like yeah. you work on it, goes away, Because comes of back. your sport. Work yeah, on it, goes away. movements that are staples. Or an imbalance of yes. some sort right. that you need to correct. Like, and at that point now you're just treating the symptom, you're not really treating the, 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 the cause. Right. The root mm -hmm. cause, so. Okay. Well, I think that's a big thing to point out, actually, talking about a tool like this and why we also, you know, sure, this will give you immediate relief in that area, but ultimately there's something that's causing that dysfunction. Mm -hmm. So if we're overactive in an area, and I know Sal said he doesn't like to use that term, but I think it's the easiest for people to relate to, is that you're overactive for a reason. Your signal's that, a lot stronger. Yes, it's that. a lot stronger. So yeah. the root cause is learning to find that balance of firing. And, you know, we just had a live Q&A with somebody, and they were giving an example of their, their hip flexors being over dominant which tends to be really common when people squat and they have an asymmetrical shift so when I squat over all of a sudden I put all this weight over here on the side so then I get like this knotted feeling and really it's just there it's overactive it's it's carrying too much of the load and really the dysfunction is I'm I have the shift and sure I can roll it I could do all these things but that's really just putting a band-aid over the real issue the real issue is I have an imbalance with my mechanics that I need to start to address and fix. So okay. I always like to have tools like this on hand so we can fix something if I notice it in somebody's movement patterns at that exact moment, but ultimately what I wanna do is fix whatever the real dysfunction is and get to the root cause. Right, okay, great, yeah. And I think I've done a good job at doing that and avoiding problems. Oh, for sure. But, I mean, not all of them. I mean, my ankles are always, uh, constantly like time bombs and I always wondered how how much this this stuff would actually help and I didn't even but I didn't even know how to I think your, add it in. your ankles may you may be tight because there's some mobility they're issues. actually they're actually really flexible not the flexibility there may be an issue with uh, control in particular you do lots of uh, ballistic movement so you're, yeah. you're not you're testing yourself at, at a different level so I think there may be a strength issue um, or an imbalance that's causing your muscles to tighten in certain ways to try and stabilize things, yeah, and that may be why yeah. you have tight you know, calves or tight you know, muscles surrounding the ankle. So okay. uh, you want to identify those, and remember, you don't have, uh, you're not going to be the standard in right. terms of, your mobility is probably, I mean, compared to the average person, is incredible yeah. in your ankles. But for what you do, there may be some things you can work on, and that's okay. why you're getting tired. I'll give you two right now. Can you sit on the edges of your, yeah. on both of them together like that? Yeah. So if you can do that, you, like that, yeah, and then squat down all the way in that position. So here's another one, is to take you up on your toes. So get up on the balls, 
feet together just like this so you're on, on here and we're gonna yeah. pinch this, pinch it with your ankles. So pinch the ball. Yeah. While you're up on your toes. Okay, while you're up on your toes. So stay on your toes, yes, and keep the ball pinched while you squat and staying on your toes. I can't, the ball's not big enough. <laughs> <laughs> so squeeze the, keep it squeezed right there from that With position. my calves? Yeah, it's fine, just keep, yeah, keep it pinched. There you go, and stay on the balls of your feet while, while you squat and keeping it, oh, keeping it close. That's a fucked up exercise. It sure is. <laughs> and, and what you really want, okay, is to get up as high as you can. So yeah. I'm really up, up on, the, on, on my toes. toes while I'm pinching the ball, there you go keeping the ball squeezed. That's a pretty neat exercise, mm -hmm. actually. Doing that and doing the, the opposite, which we just did with the, the squat, which you already do, that, that's a great, so this would be a great way to kind of warm that all up before you get into your moves. Yeah. That'll get all that firing and connected really well, doing both of those, and then get into your movement like always, that. Always good, all right, yeah. very good, thank you. Cool. Thank you, Sal. Yeah, no problem, <laughs> thank you, brother. Now, for you. You and I spent the night together. Yeah, right? no, we just, you already just, asked me. Oh, I, was, I, was playing with their, I was already playing with their dogs. You're on that level, huh? <laughs> so I'm going to ask you a question. It's non training or Oh, okay. Because okay. I feel like you're more of the uh, philosopher of the group, the honestly. Philosopher. I, yeah. I read a lot of Dr. Seuss. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty much where most of it is. So I asked the same question I asked you last night. What do you think is my weakness that I need to shore up? Oh, okay. If I were to, ev if I were to evaluate your no, business, right where here. you're at right now, and where I think you could use the most help is uh, people. And that's because I think you've done an incredible job building uh, your business to where it's at right now. And you're at a point where it's, it's growing, it's continuing to grow. And what it can start to do is detour you from what you're best at. And, and that's why you have to start to find other people to help alleviate you from the things that aren't your strengths or that you don't really care about. So maybe you're great at photo editing and cutting, but it's yeah. not really where your bread and butter, you're more creative and you're more of a thinker and a visionary. And so most of your energy and focus should be put into that. And these other things that you could pay someone an hourly fee or find somebody to do that, at one point, whether you do that now or you do that in the near future, that is gonna be necessary for you to continue to grow your business. Like you've got to find other people to alleviate the other things so you can continue. And I used to tell this, it was the best advice I ever got when I was younger, I was 22 years old. A guy came into me, it was one of my coworkers who later on became one of my best friends. And I had just had my boss come in and he had just ripped me a new one. And it was crazy, I was so frustrated because I finished at 115% of goal. I, I was celebrating, we had an awesome month. My, and all my staff, I was super proud of them. My boss comes in and rips me a new one and tells me how bad all my organization was. You I thought do, you were doing good. Yeah, I thought I was doing good because we, we, we set all these records, we did great things on the, from a financial. You thought you were gonna get praise. Exactly. Oh wow. And he came in and told me all the things that I was doing that was incomplete and all the, these areas that I was failing. And it really beat me up. And so then the next day I was just, I was fixing all those things. I was working on my organizational skills, I was working on my binders, I was getting all organized. And my buddy came over and he says, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. I said, oh, my boss came in. He said, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that. And he took my desk and he goes, whoa. Really? Yeah, and I was like, bro, what are you doing? Like, this, he's like, listen to me. He's like, you're in the position that you're in at your age for a reason. Stop focusing on the things that you're not good at. Focus on what you're good at and become great. Yeah. And like this light bulb went off in my head that I was just like, never again am I going to waste my time on things that I don't like doing, that I'm not very good at. There are things that I'm obviously strong at. I, what I need to do is to focus my time and my energy and what I love doing and what I'm good at and become great at it. Yeah. And that was like forever for me, like some of the best advice I ever give and I think, or that it was given to me and that I feel like I could share with others that, you know, so easily when you're building a business, you know how daunting it can be and how many different yeah. legs and things you have to focus on is realizing where you're good at, what you enjoy doing, putting most of your time and energy in that, and the other thing is you need to learn how to delegate out. I actually list. had an experience with that recently where I was thinking about, uh, uh, you know, I just got a new place, it's bigger, gotta clean it, right? So like, you know, twice a week you gotta go in and clean the whole house or whatever. And I thought to myself, like, oh, I should hire somebody to come do that. I and did then, that recently. And so, so I was raised. They came at the wrong time. They came when I was filming something. Oh, God. That's <laughs> so was, I was angry. I, I, sorry, maids. I was in a bad mood when you interrupted my Instagram clip. I was just about to film. And uh, we do it later. We just had someone do that earlier. Yeah. Yeah. I, almost, I, almost, I almost body slammed everybody. Yeah. So, uh, so what happened was I was thinking, okay, I'm going to hire someone to do this. And part of me, look, I grew up a blue collar family. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm the product of immigrants. They, my, my parents did everything themselves. They yeah. came from that mentality. So part of me was kind of guilty, like, well, why am I, I'll just do it myself. Like, why should yeah. I hire someone? Then I thought to myself, like, I gotta be smart about this, right? I can definitely do this on my own, 
but would I, can I get more out of that time doing things that are going to earn me more yeah. than it'll cost me to have this person clean my house? So for example, you talk about editing your, you know, Adam was talking about editing your videos. Yeah. You could probably, you'll, you'll profit more focusing on your creativity aspect and having someone, and pay someone to do that. The, the net benefit will be, will be positive yeah. uh, in terms of profit. It's all about well. scaling. That's you know, it. Like how, you always have to think in those terms of like, how can I scale? How can I duplicate myself on an even greater stage? And, and how can I make that efficient in that process? So yeah, it always evol involves more people and getting more people involved. And for me, like my strengths um, are limited, you know, my, my strengths. And so I know what I am capable of doing and I want to focus in on those strengths, but then I want to surround myself with people that you know will enhance what I'm doing at that high level. So, well, I, I actually think it's hard. Like I can see like exactly what you're saying, and I've even thought about myself. Like this is something that someone else can do. Here's something I can do that they can't do, that no one else can do. This is what I need to focus on: is the irrepro irreproducible stuff that no one else can do other than me. So I need to outsource the other things to people that can do these other things. The problem is, maybe it's a skill I'm still working on, but. If, it's like, yes, this is what I need to outsource, but actually doing it is a skill in itself. And Delegation just, is a skill. It is, it is hard. Delegation is a skill. How do, how do, I, how do I judge whether the, uh, where the best places to find the people are, the best, the best way to... Well, the that's a process. Yeah, it's hard. That's a yeah. process. It so presents hard. itself sometimes. It's so simple. Just yeah. get someone else to do it. Well, yes, I know that <laughs> someone else needs to do it, but it's so fucking hard yeah. to, like, <laughs> to find, to, to look good. where to ask. And who and how and, and this is wow. Well, what we have now, yeah. and we and we've been kind of experimenting a little bit. I mean, especially you, you have a you have a huge pool of people that are following. And when you're talking about half a million million people that are tuning into you, there's a very good chance that there's a handful of them in there that have these skills that you can use. You just got to find a way to get them. So you know, either running some sort of a uh, competition to you know submit. You know, I'm going to give you guys a, a video, and X amount of people can submit it. And I'm looking for possibly an internship with somebody yeah. so maybe I would give them a, a rough thing and just see where their creativity goes and oh, see that's a good idea see. just give them some footage and have them edit it into a into whatever I ask them to do and see who does it and don't even you ask him I would evaluate let them the skills because you don't there, want yeah. that job you don't even want to have to direct that you want to you want to see you want someone to impress you you want to go like oh I, I didn't even think yeah, that's of that. a dream scenario right yeah or someone takes it and just creates it you know puts it together and you're like I, was oh, like, I give them it. 10 clips put it together somehow yeah yeah, yeah make it look yeah. good let me see what you got that's if you're good, good I'll hire yeah. you mm -hmm. all right yeah there you, you go. see you watching this guys <laughs> contact me you know what my problem is so I don't know I'm kind of reaching out I'm grasping for straws here could really use some help. Yeah, I and think that I think doing a, a, a like you said, put together a clip, find a, get some people to submit to you that that's either one their degree that they already have or that they're currently going through, or just a passion that they love to do that. You'd be surprised, man. We that's how right now we're we're currently doing that with uh, look, searching for bloggers. Yeah. And you know we want it. We're looking. We have a ton of people that said they could blog for us, but we're looking for something specific. And so one of the things we requested was, you know, we want four or five examples of how you would write and blog about Mind Pump. Mm -hmm. And then we all sat together and said, hey, I really like what this guy's saying. This is great. Like, this totally represents our brand. And let's get this guy on a call. And then let's see where we can go with this relationship. And okay. I think that's how you start. You just start with gathering people that would be even interested in doing that. And then from there, you can figure out how they're going to fit into your, your business. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Cool. Man, it's so I'm so lucky to be able to that you guys would invite me to come and just hang Of course, out. Oh, man, our it. pleasure. So, you know, I you can tell so much about a man by two things, man. Either mm. one, you're a roller skate motherfucker. Okay. Or or you're a bike guy. Are you a bike guy or are you a roller skater guy? Uh, I'm not sure, man. What are you, Sal? I think bike. What about you, Juji? I think Juji's a roller skate guy. Are you a roller skate guy? Yeah.